Let's stand one more time. Turn to page number 230. Grace greater than our sin, page 230. Let's sing the first, third, and last verse together, page 230. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilt, singing this morning. You may be seated. Take your Bibles, if you would, and turn to the book of Matthew, to the ninth chapter of the book of Matthew. And normally, during the last congregation, I put this on, and I did not. So if you give me just a brief moment here. Matthew chapter 9. As I mentioned, the songs... Uh, just go so well with the, the message this morning, the congregational singing, and we think about uh, living by faith, and, and we'll see this morning how that faith made a man whole, and uh, all hail the power, we're going to talk about the power of Jesus Christ this morning, to heal and to forgive, and then um, to forgive our sins, grace greater than our sin, all of those go so well with the message this morning. Matthew chapter 9 in your Bibles, if you join me in standing in honor of the reading of God's Word. Matthew 9, we'll read the first eight verses of the ninth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. And he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, laying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. But that ye may know 
that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, then they marveled and glorified God, glorified God which had given such power unto men. Uh, this morning we're going to preach on this topic, forgiveness to glory, forgiveness to glory. Father in heaven, we thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for uh, your grace and mercy. Lord, we, we think about um, the songs that were sung this morning, the faith that you've given us, grace that's greater than our sins that you've given us, uh, the power uh, that is in Jesus' name that that uh, he has to forgive us our sins and uh, we hail and glorify the uh, glory uh, glorify the, the your power and and uh, glory in your in your uh, your name and your son's name uh, the name Jesus Christ what a uh, a blessing it is lord uh, as we re preach on this passage this morning we just pray that that uh, our end result would always to glorify god and not just to bring attention to ourselves or to get something from god lord i pray that you'd help us glean something. I pray you'd help me rightly divide the word of truth, fill me with your spirit. I uh, pray that you help me preach with power this morning, Lord. I think about uh, Brother Weida, who's not able to be here uh, this morning. I failed to mention him during prayer time. I pray that you'd be with him this morning. Bless him, heal him, we ask, bring him back. We just pray that you'd be with every aspect of this service, that we'd honor and glorify you, and we pray it in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. In this passage, we see the first of many interactions the first, at least, that is uh, um, written down of many interactions with the scribes and Pharisees about who Jesus is and what Jesus has the ability or the power to do. We first of all see the fourth coming. That's Jesus Christ coming across the sea, the Sea of Galilee. If you look at verse 1, and he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. Jesus had just come across the Sea of Galilee uh, to his own hometown of Nazareth. Now before that, he was in the wilderness. He was returning from the wilderness where the greatest message of all time was delivered to his disciples and others, the Sermon on the Mount, chapters 6, 7, and 8. Notice we're in chapter 9. Uh, uh, if you have a red letter edition in your Bible, I'm looking down, I see my wife has a red letter edition. A almost all of chapter 5, uh, I'm sorry, 6, 7, and 8 are all in red, and uh, those are the words of Jesus. Jesus starts preaching. He goes into the wilderness in the beginning of chapter 6 with his disciples, and he begins to, to, to teach them and preach to them. And before the end of everything, there's many that had gathered there in the wilderness, and he'd preached the, the greatest message, in my opinion, of all time, uh, the, the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, after that, he's coming across. Now, before the Sermon on the Mount, before him going into the wilderness, he had been traveling through Galilee, healing many. Look back in chapter 4, before uh, the Sermon on the Mount, in, in chapter 4, I said 6, I meant five, uh, uh, 5 through 8. I'm sorry, five through, what did I say? Five, five through seven. And then uh, chapter eight, he had been in the um, uh, uh, traveling and, and preaching there in, uh, in the Galilee. And then before chapter five, in verse number 23 in chapter four, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Verse 24, and his fame went throughout all Syria, uh, the northern part of what we call Israel right now, uh, and Galilee, that area, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those uh, which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. So we see in this passage that, uh, um, uh, that Jesus has healed many. Um, it's impossible to know how many people Jesus healed during his ministry. 
Now we can say how many uh, healings were recorded, how many times we had a recorded healing of, from Jesus Christ, but it's impossible to know for sure because there's verses like this that in verse 23 and 24 that he healed many, that there were many healed. Verse 23, uh, 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 and healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of disease among the people. And at the end of verse 24 it says, and those were lunatic and those had uh, palsy and he healed them. So uh, uh, th there, were, there were all kinds of different diseases, all kinds of different problems that, that were, they were bringing to Jesus and he healed many. Before this, at chapter 4, he had spent 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness being tempted by the devil. Before that, he was baptized by John the Baptist. Before that, we know very little about his life unto his childhood. So what I'm getting to uh, is this is the beginning near this passage that we read, even though it's nine chapters in the book of Matthew, it's in the, uh, the beginning or near the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry. We have uh, that he was baptized, he went into uh, the wilderness to be tempted of the Satan, uh, he ch is choosing disciples, he's healing, there's a Sermon on the Mount, and then he comes across the lake to, uh, I'm sorry, the sea, the Sea of Galilee, to, uh, um, to this place in chapter 9. And I, again, I say all of that to, for uh, importance to understand that there's many people, to this point, there's been many, many people that he has healed. And uh, we'll see in a moment uh, why that's important. So verse number uh, 1, we see the fourth coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ coming across the Sea of Galilee into his own town. Verse number 2, we see the faith. And, he beha and, and behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy. As he returns, he is met by a paralyzed man with some helpful friends. They bring this man to Jesus for the purpose of healing. And Jesus had done quite a bit of that. And we know that, that the, the, the word of Jesus Christ had been spread abroad. There, many people had been healed. And uh, this, this uh, man sick of the palsy of paralysis, uh, paralyzed in some way, he, he had some, some faithful, some kind friends that say, hey, we believe that this man, uh, Jesus Christ, we believe that Jesus uh, can help you and Jesus, uh, I mean, I will say in a mo show in a moment, uh, I believe they didn't just believe that he was there to, to be a help, but they believe, I believe they thought that this was not just some guy or some man, that I believe they thought this was, that this Jesus was God that this is the Son of God. Now, why do you say that? Look what it says in verse number two. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed, and Jesus seeing their faith. Now, Jesus saw something that you and I couldn't see. It doesn't say specifically that they believed that Jesus uh, was the Christ. It doesn't say specifically that, that they believed that Jesus was uh, the Messiah. But to this point, at least recorded, Jesus has healed many and he has not said these words to anyone. Uh, Thy sins be forgiven thee, that we're gonna, we're gonna talk about in a moment. To this point, he's not said that to anyone, uh, uh, at least recorded. Maybe he has, but to this point, he's not said that. He has healed people, but he has not said your sins are forgiven, at least recorded to, to this point. And, and um, I believe that their faith in their, that their faith that Jesus is re, uh, talking about is that he was not just a healer but a Messiah, and they acted upon that. That's what faith is. Faith is uh, hearing the word of God or, or hearing truth and and believing it and acting upon it. And so they they saw that this that this Jesus is is God. And you say, well, how would you know that? Well, uh, they knew the Psalm, Psalm 103. If you take your Bible, I've got it written down here in my notes. But take your Bible, go back to the Psalms. The 103rd Psalm, Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Who has the power, the power according to this Psalm, to heal iniquities, to heal diseases? 
If they knew this passage, they knew that this was not just some uh, uh, random person that was coming. That They knew that this was not just some guy that was doing good deeds. They knew, according to Scripture, that the Lord was, is the one that heals diseases. And again, I, it's my opinion that when Jesus said, uh, and you can mark Psalm 103, we'll come back to 103, Psalm 103 in, in a moment. Um, but uh, it's my opinion that when they, when they heard that Jesus uh, Christ is healing, that they believe that this is the Son of God. And, and you say, well, are, are you sure? Well, we'll see as we go through this passage that it's, uh, uh, in our minds, it seems to, we can separate the idea of healing physically and healing spiritually. But in Scripture, and let's do this. While we're here, and you're, you're still there in Psalm 103, and I haven't marked it and turned away from there, so uh, go back to Psalm 103. We read verses 1 through 3. Bless, uh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. So we, we see that the, that the Lord is the one that heals diseases. And then look at verse 4. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all they that are oppressed. He made known... Uh, um, he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts and children. I skipped the verse I was looking for. Verse 3. I don't know why I, I said, uh, uh, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. So you see, uh, forgiveness, I don't know why I kept, uh, kept on reading, except for, if we read down to verse number 7, it says, He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. And so it says, hey, he's forgiven your iniquities, and he's healed your diseases. He made known himself unto Moses. If we uh, uh, took the time, we, we won't take the time this morning, we can go back and look in, in, in the book of Exodus for very similar passages that talk about God having the ability to forgive sins, and to heal diseases. Those two in the same. And so uh, um, here's Jesus and he comes across, he's, he's healed many before and, and they bring a man sick of palsy and, and he says, thy faith, verse number, uh, verse number two, it says, uh, he beholding, uh, and, they, uh, and behold, they brought to him a man sick of palsy lying in bed and Jesus seeing their faith, said unto the sick of palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven. This has to be the Lord. This has to be the Son of God. This has to be God because he has the ability to forgive sins. But they are, they, th when they brought this man to Jesus, they believed, I believe, because Jesus said that he saw their faith. Their faith in what? Was it just their, their faith to, in, in healing? Their faith that someone could be healed. I believe that when he saw their faith, again, Jesus could see something that we couldn't see. I believe that they saw that this, this man, this uh, 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 man from Nazareth is the son of God. He is God himself. And he has the ability to not just uh, uh, heal, uh, heal diseases, but to forgive sins. And so when they bring him, this man, uh, to Jesus... We have the fourth coming of Jesus, and then we have the forgiveness. I'm sorry, the faith. And then after that, in verse number three, we see the forgiveness. When Jesus saw their faith, he didn't offer healing. And that's another clue to me, at least, to say that, that uh, their faith was more than just saying, hey, this is a guy that can do good things. This was uh, people who were recognizing and who were realizing that this is the Son of God. This, this man is coming from the Lord. Because when they bring him to the, uh, bring this man to Jesus, he sees their faith, and he doesn't offer healing; he offers forgiveness. Notice his phrase here. Uh, uh, I love this phrase: "Son, be of good cheer; thy sins be forgiven." Wonderful cheer. Have you heard the song before? Gone, 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 gone. Yes, my sins are gone. Now my soul is free and in my heart's a song. Buried in the deepest sea. Yes, that's good enough for me. We can, I shall live eternally. I'm not going to try. Praise God, my sins are gone. Maybe started a little bit high, but pray, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. 
We can, we can rejoice and, and be of, of great cheer when our sins are forgiven. And our sins, when they are forgiven, should bring great cheer. And so Jesus looks on this man. He sees their faith and he says, hey, be of good cheer. Notice what he says. He doesn't say rise up and walk. He says, You're, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. And so when his sins were forgiven, he says, hey, you have uh, uh, you can have a, 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 a clean heart and a, and, and a, a joy in your heart uh, and, and a praise on your lips, uh, a cheer because your, your sins are forgiven. Now, if it was just their faith and their healing, I, I don't know that that was, uh, would have been Jesus' response. Remember, in the times past, he's healed. This same story is found in Luke uh, I should have written it down. It's in my notes in my office, but uh, it, it is found in Mark and Luke, Luke chapter five and Mark chapter two, if I'm not mis mistaken. But both of these, all, all three, uh, it's not found in the book of John, but in all three gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, in all three, you see Jesus healing people before this story, but not until this story do you see Jesus forgiving someone. And so I think that's the, the distinction here. Jesus, these men come and Jesus says, hey, I see their faith. He says, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven thee. What joy, what cheer. I might say this, that forgiveness indicates that a sin has been done against the person offering the forgiveness. Uh, let's say Brother Martin offends Brother Abraham. Brother Abraham was looking at Brother Martin like he's the one that's going to be picked on this morning. And then Brother, let's say Brother Martin offends Brother Abraham. Brother, Brother Abraham has been offended by Brother Martin. He's been harmed. He's been hurt in whatever way. Now, if Brother Martin wants forgiveness, he has a secret from the Lord. But then if he's seeking it from the individual, he would not come to me. Right? I mean, he, he wouldn't, he's not wronged me. He wouldn't come to me and say, hey, pastor, will you forgive me? Well, unless he's wronged me, there's no need to seek forgiveness from me. If he came to me, I'd say, well, you need to talk to Brother Abraham. You need to seek forgiveness from him. Right. Now, here, here, think about this. Here comes this man. Jesus meets this man. He sees their faith, and he says, thy sins be forgiven thee. Another note before I, I go on, continue with the idea of forgiveness there. Uh, um, I, I want you to know that Jesus forgave, and he forgave often. Now remember on the cross, he said, uh, 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 he said, um, get my, jar my mind back into memory. He, he says, uh, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus forgave, uh, forgave sins. He was a forgiver. Now, has this man, man done anything wrong to the man, Jesus? To the man, if, if, earthly speaking, it would indicate that he had. So think about this, uh, um, that when Jesus came, uh, when this man came uh, and, and Jesus saw the faith of his friends and the faith of him, he said, thy sins be forgiven. In all indication, by all indications, this man hadn't ever done Jesus anything wrong. How could Jesus be able to forgive his sins if he hadn't done him anything wrong. I'll get to that in a moment. Can I say that Jesus didn't say, Father, I tolerate them? Can I tell you that Jesus didn't say, uh, I'm tolerating his sins? I'm, no, when, we, when, when, uh, when, someone, when forgiveness is offered, uh, you're, you're, uh, the, the uh, observation is that there is a sin committed. He's not ignoring, so when you tolerate something, what you're doing is you're ignoring that any sin or any wrong has been done. You're just saying, I'm, I'm, I'll, just, I'll just forget about that, as if no wrong has been done at all. But forgiveness is an act of kindness pointing out that there is a sin. When, if I just say I tolerate, think, think about this. If, in the same situation, if, if Brother uh, 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 Martin wronged Brother Abraham, and Brother Abraham just tolerated it, just tolerate it. I'll just, I'll just ignore it. I'll just ignore it. As if it didn't happen. As if there was no wrong done. There's not a, a, an, a, um, a, a, an observation or a pointing out of the sin taking place. Forgiveness, though there's grace 
And though there's kindness and forgiveness, there is still uh, uh, an observation that a sin took place, that something wrong happened. Tolerance is not what is necessary in this world. Forgiveness, the forgiveness of God is what is necessary in this world. We need God to forgive. We need people to come to God and not have God tolerate sin, but for them to seek forgiveness of sin. Because God in His kindness and His grace will forgive, but you can't just say, well, I I want God to tolerate my sin. I want God just to to put up with my sin. I want to just hide my sin and not not have it pointed out. But forgiveness is is when something is pointed out. Think about the forgiveness of a loan. If you take a loan to a to a banker or someone that, that has the bank and it, it, that has that loan that holds that loan, and if they forgive that that loan, you have to point out that it's being forgiven that, that there was a loan there in the first place. That is a major point of forgiveness that a wrong has been done. A tolerance, on the other hand, is just ignoring that anything wrong has happened. Forgiveness cannot happen if there is tolerance. And so, now there's long suffering. We preached about that a few weeks ago. God will suffer long, but there is, uh, even then, there is suffering. And so, uh, uh, I want to point out that Jesus didn't tolerate this man, or didn't offer tolerance. He offered forgiveness. He forgave him. He indicated by forgiveness that he was the one, that Jesus is the one, that this man had sinned against. The next verse, the, the fault. Verse number three, when the scribes saw that this, when the scribes saw that Jesus offered forgiveness, when the scribes saw that Jesus actually declared forgiveness on this man, look what they said, verse three, and behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemous, blasphemous. When the scribes saw Jesus say, hey, you're forgiven, they understood what was being said. They understood the underlying ideas here. They understood that when you're offering forgiveness, that you're the one that has been sinned against. They understood uh, Exodus chapter 34. Uh, let, me, let me go there. Exodus chapter 34, verse number 5 says, And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him, the speaking of Moses, the second time on the mount, and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Uh, um, he is uh, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression, uh, transgression and sin, and that they will uh, by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children and on the third and to the fourth generation. So in this passage, in, in th- these scribes, if anyone knew the law, the scribes knew the law. If anyone knew what Exodus chapter 34, of course they didn't have it in divisions like that, but if anyone knew that God is the one that forgives, that only God can forgive sins, that only God can can forgive, even when we think about the first time we see forgiveness, that is mentioned to uh, uh, um, Joseph. In fact, uh, Jacob or Israel asked Joseph to forgive his brothers, and Joseph says, because he's already done it. He's already, he says, I I can't take the place of God. God has to forgive. These men knew, and in fact, uh, Joseph went to God on their behalf. Go back and look, I I didn't write that passage. I think it's Genesis chapter 49, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 48, 49, 50, somewhere in there. Uh, Anyway, um, but, but, but Joseph went to God on their behalf, asking God for forgiveness. Even though we would view that, that Joseph um, was wronged by his brothers, he's saying, hey, I've already given that up. God has to forgive them. They have to seek forgiveness from God. So these scribes, they understood that, that, that the forgiveness, when Jesus said, thy sins be forgiven thee, they understood the importance of that. They understood that this wasn't just some guy saying, oh yeah, I forgive you, you've done me wrong. They understood that when he says, thy sins be forgiven, it wasn't just that this man had wronged Jesus in the past some time ago. They understood that Jesus was taking the place of God. In fact, you know that because they used the term blaspheme. And the word blaspheme literally means to take God's place, to take the place of God, to, to say, hey, you're forgiven. Who's been wronged? Who has the sin been against? 
Well, we have all sinned against God. And they knew the law. They knew uh, that all men had sinned uh, against God, that all men had gone against the law. They knew that. And so they were saying, hey, this guy, this man, Jesus Christ, he, or, or Jesus, he is blaspheming. He's taking the place of God. This is not just about healing. This is, uh, they're saying, hey, you can't be, you can't be in God's stead, or God's stead, in God's place. Now, let me say this. <clears throat> to be kind uh, to the to the uh, um, to the Pharisees or to the scribes rather, if they had been talking to anyone else in the world, had it been had this been anyone else in the entire world, they would have been right. Had it, had it been any one of the disciples, had it been John the Baptist, had this been anyone else in the world they would have been exactly right. Uh, the, it's estimated at the time of uh, uh, the, the life of Jesus Christ, there were 300 million people in the world, less than who's the number of people in the United States right now, but across the world, estimated, of course, they didn't know for sure, but estimated 300 million people. They had, in the, their statement, they had a 299 million, 999,999 in 300 million chance in getting that right. Does that make sense? That's, that's a really good bet. If you're going to bet, it's a really good bet. They had, uh, in percentages, not that this really matters, but they had a 99.9999997% chance in being that that's correct. Literally, everyone else alive, that would have been true of. I mean, think about it. Anyone else in the world at the time, if they said, that's blasphemous, you can't say that, that would have been correct. No one else could have forgiven those sins. Those sins, the, the sins that the man had committed, the sins of his uh, life against God, the, 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 the going against what God's law was, those sins had been committed against God. And Jesus Christ, as God said, your, thy sins be forgiven. And they said, you can't do that. That's blasphemous. That's taking the place of God. And if it had been any other man in the world, that would have been correct, except that was Jesus, and he is God. He is the Son of God. He came to forgive sinners. He came for that purpose. And so Jesus was the only one that could forgive sins, even though they could have been right if it were anyone else in this world. Then in verse number four, we see the foresight. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, Wherefore, think ye evil in your hearts. So which is interesting to me that Jesus, they said, they, could, they had a 99 point, however many nines and a 7% chance of being right. Jesus said, you've got evil in your heart. You've got evil in your hearts. He had the foresight enough to say, hey, there's, there's wickedness, there's evil in your heart. Even though they could have, if it was anyone else, say, so what was the big deal? What was the, their evil? What was so evil about them saying, hey, you can't forgive sins. That's blasphemous. That's taking the place of God. Their evil was that they did not recognize Jesus as God. That was the evil that they had done. They did not recognize Jesus as the one who could forgive sins. Again, when we go back to it, they were fine with him healing people but they were not fine when it came to forgiving sins. And yet, we go back in scripture, we see those things are both done by God. They were fine, listen, with a social gospel, they were not fine with a spiritual gospel. That's important to understand. They were fine with Jesus healing them. Look what he says next, the, 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 the feedback, verse number five. For whether is easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and walk. Now, at this point, he hadn't said arise and walk. The scribes assumed that the men and this, uh, 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 this man sick of palsy, this man who was paralyzed, they assumed that the reason they came to Jesus was just for a social, God, just for, for a, a, a physical benefit. Where I believe Jesus saw their faith and they, he realized that they knew that he was God. They knew that he is God. And as, he, as they came to him, he realized that they understood the difference uh, or the, the, that, that he is God. And he said, hey, I see your faith. Thy sins, 
not rise up and walk, thy sins be forgiven thee. Jesus didn't randomly forgive someone. Uh, they, they had to come seeking that. You have to you understand that? We don't believe in a, a, a Calvinistic approach to God where God just decides who's saved and who's not. So this man had to indicate, and I believe by his faith, Jesus saw his faith and he said, hey, thy sins be forgiven thee. And, the, and the, 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 not the disciples, the scribes said, whoa, 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 you can't do that. You're taking the place of God. And Jesus said, knowing the evil in their hearts, because they would not recognize him as God, he said, which is more difficult? To say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or rise up and walk? Which is more difficult? What he's pointing out is they both come from God. That power to forgive sins is the same power to uh, to rise up and to say rise up and walk to heal to heal uh, 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 sickness. And he had been doing that for a, a good amount of time to many people. We don't know how many, but in several verses it says many or or several people. We know that that he'd been healing many people, but at this point he sees a, a group of men coming and he says, "I see your faith, and your sins are forgiven." Not. Arise and walk. Now, not only did he tell them that he, uh, uh, not only did they tell them that their sins were, for, tell him that his sins were forgiven, but uh, look at, well, we'll come back to verse number six, verse number seven and eight, the fix. And he arose and departed. Well, verse six, but when he had no, uh, but, but, uh, but that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. So Jesus said, All right, uh, you want to see something else? Arise, take up thy bed, or arise, go into thy house. Uh, 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 arise, take up thy bed, and go into thine house. And so after he forgave his sins, Jesus said, uh, You want to see something else? I'll heal him too. And he, he fixed him. He healed him. Now, he had already forgiven him, and now he healed him, and he goes into his house. Now, the purpose, though, or the function, the, the, the function is this. Look at verse number six. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. And Jesus is trying to point out here that there's no difference here in, in healing sins, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, forgiving sins and healing sickness. There's not a difference here. We see it in the law, we see it in, the, in the, the, uh, the, the books of poetry, where if God has the ability or the power to heal, then he has the ability to forgive. And these men that came to Jesus, they saw that, but these scribes didn't see that. They were okay, as I mentioned before, they were okay with the social gospel. They were not okay with Jesus being God. Listen, we have many people who are okay with religion. We have a lot of people that are okay with religion as long as you just keep it in the, the church house. As long as you just do good things and, and help people. But the point of the word of God, the point of a church is to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ that Jesus is God and can forgive sins. That's the whole purpose. Look at the, the uh, finally, the, the fallout. Look at verse number uh, eight. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God. Which, which, uh, had been, uh, which, had given, which had given such power unto men. What power? The, the power to heal? No, the power to forgive sins. Now they're saying unto men. Why men? Because Jesus Christ was a man. Jesus Christ was all man. He was all God. He, 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 he came in the flesh, but he's all God. He's deity. He has the ability to forgive sins. And they said... Uh, glory to God that there's a man that's come from God to forgive sins, that has the ability, has the power to forgive sins. There's two responses that, that uh, forgiveness brings. Uh, we see cheer. <laughs> Look, son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee in verse number three. Uh, uh, verse number two, rather. Be of good cheer. There's cheer and then there's chatter. You have some that are rejoicing that God's forgiven sins. You have some that, that, are, uh, 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 that are of good uh, uh, cheer, that, that, that have a, a song in their heart, that are excited for the forgiveness, forgiveness of sins. And then you have those that don't believe, that chatter. 
They, they, they say, hey, that's blasphemous. This man, Jesus Christ, cannot forgive sins. This is not God. They're okay with the healing, but they're not okay with Jesus being God, Jesus being the one who takes away the sin of the world. What is the desired outcome in closing? What should this do? What should this forgiveness do? Let me ask you this. How many have accepted, how many have asked God for forgiveness of sins? How many have been forgiven of your sins by Jesus Christ? If you've accepted Christ as your Savior, you asked Him to forgive you of your sins, He's done that. And, and, and uh, uh, no doubt there's many in here that have uh, a great cheer because of that. But that's not all that's supposed to happen. No doubt we go outside these wall, there's walls, there's many that, uh, that chatter. There's many that disagree. There's many that say, that's blasphemous, that's not right. We're okay with the good deeds, but we're not okay with the good word. We're not okay with the, with the gospel. We're not okay with that. What should forgiveness bring? Look, verse number 8. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God. Listen, if you've come to the place in your life where you've accepted Christ as your Savior, you realize that you're a sinner, that you've sinned against God, and the result of your sin would uh, earn you a, a ticket, a one-way ticket to, to hell, your eternal destiny would, hell, would be hell, and you've asked God to forgive you of your sins, you've asked uh, Jesus Christ to forgive your sins, to, for his, his blood to cover your sins, the blood that he shed on the cross of Calvary to forgive you of your sins, or to cover your sins and to forgive you. If you've done that, then what you, your life should bring is glory to God. You should be constantly glorifying God. You should be like these other men, bringing other men to Jesus Christ. That he sees your faith and says, hey, I'm accepting that man. I'm giving forgiveness. We need to offer that. Now, there's many naysayers. There's many that will doubt. There's many that, uh, you say, Pastor, how come you're not preaching on uh, all the, the, the trials and troubles of the day? Well, because what we need is people to, that we need forgiveness of sins. Whether it's a, 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 a sin or whether it's a, a transgression by a police officer or against a police officer, th those are all both results of sin. And the only way that we're going to overcome them is not by a social gospel. We're going to overcome them by uh, uh, the forgiveness of sins. Jesus Christ is the only one. And he has the, that power. He has the power to, to offer peace. He has the power to, to, to forgive and heal a land. But it, that power is, uh, comes from forgiveness of sins. The power that we have get is the same as the forgiveness of sins. And that's what we need. We need for, for the blood of Jesus Christ to cover our sins. And we need uh, people to humble themselves before God and, and say, God, please forgive me. Forgive my sins. Amen. That's what we need. If you've never done that, then today is the day of salvation. We're not going to have a, a, a come forward invitation, but I would ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Mrs. Moffat's going to come to the piano and play slowly. Say, Pastor, I've never accepted Christ as my Savior. I've never asked for my sins to be forgiven. I realize that the wages of my sin is death, that in my sins I deserve to spend eternity in hell. Maybe I've come to God many times for healing, I've come to God many times for uh, uh, blessings, but I've never asked His Son, Jesus Christ, for forgiveness of sins. I've never asked. I've expected Him to tolerate me, but I've never, ex I've never asked God to forgive me. If you've never done that, if you've never bowed your head and asked God through Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins, then today would be the day where you could bow your head Close your eyes and say, Father in heaven, I'm a sinner. I know that I deserve hell and I know that I have no goodness in me. In my works, I would spend eternity in hell. In my religion, I would spend eternity in hell. In all the good things that I have, I would spend eternity in hell. And so I want to ask you through your, the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, to forgive me of my sins. If you ask him to forgive you of your sins, to, to come into your heart and save you today, 
then today is the day of your salvation. It's a new life. If you've already done that, you say, Pastor, I can remember when I was six years old or 12 years old or 22 years old or, or, or 31 years old or however, when, whatever it was. For me, I was 12 years old, July 3rd, 1993. I accepted Christ as my Savior. Then what you need to do is cheer up and give glory to God. Keep bringing people to Jesus Christ. Keep bringing people to Jesus Christ so they can see the changing power of Jesus Christ in their lives. In a moment, I'm going to, have, I'm going to uh, pray and have a, word, uh, have a word of prayer and say amen. The, the musicians are going to begin to uh, play. And you'll have uh, some time to, to spend alone with God. Don't, you don't have to come to the altar. But just in your seat, spend time with God. God, help me glorify you for my forgiveness of my sins. Don't, I don't want to overlook how wretched and filthy and wicked a sinner I am and what I deserve and how you've forgiven me. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness. We pray you bless this invitation. In Jesus' name, for his sake, we pray it. Amen.